been doing some research into the different Catholic knighthoods and orders that are out there, and one of which is the uh, Knights of the Equestrian Order. Uh, they, they are headquartered in Rome, but their big thing is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Very interesting. I'm going to be talking more about that in future videos, but I just had to share this thing. This is incredible. This guy in this interview here, the, the older man that's sitting there by himself, the black suit jacket, the white shirt, and a tie there. He is a Knight of Columbus. Okay, and then this man with his wife sitting off to his side, they are uh, knights of the equestrian order. Uh, both husband and wife, you know, usually get into the thing. The women wear black, uh, you know, capes with the Jerusalem cross on the, on the arm kind of over here, kind of like the Nazis wore their armbands, you know. No connections, of course. Actually, we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit, but um, and then the men wear the white robe with the Jerusalem cross on it. But just to show you how bad, you know, Roman Catholics, really, their, their knowledge of the Bible, it just, <laughs> it's like I just start dying laughing when I heard this. You're not going to believe what this Knight of Columbus asks this guy. They're talking about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Listen to what he says. Okay, here we go. And continuous existence in the entire. Dear yeah, lady, mm -hmm. you mentioned the Holy Sepulchre. I was there. <clears throat> Is our Lord actually buried there? No. No. No, it's empty. I see. But reminiscent of Easter Sunday, the resurrection, the tomb is empty. And it's been empty ever since. I see. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can't make this stuff up. It's so insane, you know. I was at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Is our Lord buried there? I mean, is, is Jesus buried there at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre? I'm not sure. And he goes, no. And, he, and the guy goes, I see. Oh, okay. Kind of like, I thought he was. <laughs> like, good night, you know. I mean, this is like basic stuff. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and rose again the third day. Hello, you know, and the guy talks later on in the interview, this Knight of Columbus guy, he talks about, you know, going and and, and uh, meeting with the Pope and things. And he's like talking with the Pope and stuff, you know, and, and Pope John Paul II, this was recorded in 1994. High level Roman Catholic Knight of Columbus, and he doesn't know that Jesus is not buried. Let that sink in for a minute, Okay. You know, you say, why would that be? Well, if you've never heard of this, the Catholic Church has what they call incorruptible saints. Just do a little Google image search for it. They have dead bodies of their saints, and they put them in glass cases. You know, I mean, she looks a little corruptible to me, you know. I mean, really, seriously. You go around and you can see these dead carcasses that they ship them around and stuff like this. I remember James and Patrick, ex-Catholics for Christ, had a thing where uh, they actually had brought the body of some nun or something like this to this cathedral over there in, in England. And it was like just lines of Catholics, you know, just waiting to see the dead body. You know, I mean, look at this woman here, you know, just kneeling there and, oh, I'm smiling beside the dead body here. Oh, look, isn't, isn't it so neat to just be in her presence, this dead, rotting corpse? Well, not rotting. It's She's embalmed, excuse me, you know. Yeah, a little creepy, a little creepy, you know, just slightly creepy. You know, just look at, look at some of the pictures here. I mean, you know, I'm not even going to zoom in on this one here, but yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> That's why this guy, is, is is the body of our Lord there in the tomb, you know? No, he, he rose from the dead. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. But you get towards the end of this thing, this, this interview here, and uh, he actually says something which I think is very interesting. This uh, Knight of the Equestrian Order, see if I get the time right here, 30 minutes and 56 cents, seconds about there. He actually talks about the Catholics and the Nazis you know, working together, and they kind of hid some of them, and he's like, but, you know, the, the German soldiers were told that if they heard any of the holy sites, that they would be excommunicated from the church. Watch how nervous this woman gets, this this wife of this 
you know, Knight of the Equestrian Order. Watch how nervous she gets. She gets all fidgety and is like trying to say something to him like, you know, shut up, shut up, <laughs> you know. See, because back when this was recorded, this is kind of, you know, I guess there was some internet back in 1994, but not a whole lot. And uh, certainly not worldwide. Uh, the people using it all over the place. But so this is just Catholics speaking with Catholics. So they don't really have much fear about bringing out some of the truth. But now it's online. And so people like me, Bible-believing Christians, can come out and pick this thing apart. And it's incredible. If you want to know about the Knights of the Equestrian Order, um, it's the oldest military order in Catholicism. Um, very, very powerful. Extremely powerful. Very rich, wealthy, influential people. Which I'll say more on that here in just a minute. But listen to what he says and watch his wife's reaction. If you destroy this church, you have to destroy me. And he said they wouldn't burn down the church in reference to burning the monk. Because if you recall, in World War II, the Vatican City State was sanctuary. And, our, and uh, Pope Pius XII threatened Something to excommunicate better. every German in the army if they destroyed or harmed the Vatican City State. Well, I see that we're just... I see we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, I bet. You know, but did you see her? She's like, forget it. You're just like, just got all nervous. Mm -hmm. You see, because the Vatican, they try to say that, you know, like some will say the Vatican was like a safe haven for Jews and stuff. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was a safe haven for for uh, Nazis. And, of course, you know, they were given direct orders, don't harm anything. And it was both Germans and Americans and any other forces and things like that. Your name is Mud if you mess with Roman Catholic sites. Why? Because the Vatican controls the governments of the world. Absolutely. But see, here's the important thing that you need to come away with this, with this whole thing. Let's see if I can get a picture with all three of the little funny bunnies together here. Okay. There you go. Again, People will say, well, the Vatican is just a small little thing over there, and you got the Pope and some priests and some cardinals and whatever else. Uh, it's not really a threat anymore. Oh, well, yes, it is. You see, because these people are the ones that are a threat. It's a bunch of old people that are into these weird Catholic knighthoods. Yeah, you see, because they are literally heads of, heads of businesses and industry and all kinds of things. To get into the Knights of the Equestrian Order, you have to be asked. Hmm. Just kind of like uh, they call it an investure, investiture, you know, you're an investment. Literally, that's what they say. You are an investment. And they have to raise like 13 million a year or something like this, you know, from their own pockets. They talk about that, that in this interview. And it's literally the same thing as Freemasonry. You can't just walk up and say, I want to join the Masons. No, you have to. They, there's a thing. To be one, you have to know one. Same thing here. They handpick their people for the knighthoods. So you get the Catholic knighthoods at the top. Where the Vatican woos in all these rich, influential people. And then they control all the different industries and businesses and everything else out there through the Catholic knighthoods. And it's in all different countries of the world. All different countries. And then they control the militaries, the foot soldiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just, it's insane. I'll just show you a picture here real quickly. Um, I'll do Knights of the Equestrian Order. Look at the images. Okay. Here's their little processional and stuff like this. Here's the current head of it, um, Cardinal O'Brien, right there, the current head of this whole thing. He's the Grand Master of the Knights of the Equestrian Order. But you get down through here and, uh, you know, I mean, this thing goes back to like, I think the 11th century. But check this picture out. Uh, the chaplain here receives knighthood and continues to serve. Knight of the Equestrian Order. Hmm. Right there's the symbol. How about that? You know? 
And uh, a lot of the chaplains and things and the higher up uh, people in the military and everything else, the military chaplain organizations and things like that, they're Knights of the Equestrian Order. Hmm. Show you one other thing here real quickly, which I'll be talking about this more in an upcoming study. The Jerusalem Bible translation put out by the uh, Catholic Church many, many years ago. And uh, let's see if I can find a good one here. Right there you go. Right on the front cover. The Jerusalem Bible. And it's got the Knights of the Equestrian Order symbol right on the thing. And uh, you know who one of the translators was? John Ronald Rule Tolkien. I brought that out in my study on him. Tolkien was one of the translators of the Jerusalem Bible. Tolkien was the hardcore Roman Catholic. And his books were about the reestablishment of the Holy Roman Empire. Proved. I proved it. I've showed the quotes. I've showed where Jesuit priests were actually writing to Tolkien and saying, this Lady Galadriel, this Queen of Witches, were you trying to symbolize Mary with her? And he said, yeah, I was. What's the city Gondor all about? Tolkien. Uh, it's about the reestablishment of the holy city, the Vatican. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, this is a this is one of the many knights knighthoods of Roman Catholicism. You know, just insane. And these very rich, powerful people are part of it. And to get in, you have to know one. So. Just thought I had to share that, though. You know, this thing of, uh, it's, it's, I didn't know. You know, is our, our Lord's body, is it buried there? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? No, he rose from the dead. Oh, okay. I see. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, again, let me just close with that thought there, because the reality of the whole thing is you can be a high-level Catholic and not understand just the basics of the gospel. And these people sear their consciences big time to get to where they are. So, stay away from Roman Catholicism. It is a very wicked system. Certainly not the system that Jesus Christ founded after he rose from the dead. Okay? Thank you for watching.